say there is just one name Jesus Jesus I know a name that's higher than any other name at the mention every knee will bow one day there is just one
up that name, the name that is above every name. Why don't you lift your voice and give Jesus praise today? Jesus, we give you praise. Jesus, we honor you. You're worthy this morning, worthy every day, worthy continually, Lord. We bless your name. Hallelujah. I wonder if we could give the Lord a great big offering of praise this morning to bless him. The name that is above every name. It was what Isaiah declared that his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. In fact, you could hear the excitement when Philip finds Nathaniel and says unto him, we didn't just find something insignificant, but Philip said, we have found him. We have found the one, the one that we've been searching for, the one that we've heard about, the one that we have desired. Philip find Nathaniel and he said unto him we found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write Jesus of Nazareth the son of Joseph and let me declare to this church today if you seek him you will find him if you desire him if you draw nigh unto him you've got a promise that you're going to find him that he's going to draw nigh unto you you. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Are you glad to be in the house? Praise God. You can find him. And what an opportunity you have today to find Jesus. There's nothing better in this world than to find him. The one who is the, the everlasting Father, Why don't you turn to a few people this morning and just encourage them and bless them today. Welcome them to First Pentecostal Church. Let them know that you can find Jesus today. Whatever you need, you can find Him. I'd like to welcome all of our guests online and in person. Welcome to First Pentecostal Church. Why don't we give our guests a great big welcome right now. Thank you so much for being a part of this service today. If you are a first-time guest, please stop by our information desk in the foyer before you leave today. We would like to take just a moment and uh, greet you. And we also have a free gift for you as well, or a gift for you. So please stop by and see us for just a moment. Ushers, you can go ahead and begin to make your way on down. We're going to prepare to give unto the Lord. Just a few quick announcements. Remember, this Saturday is the fall festival here at First Pentecostal Church. Uh, from 4 to 7, there's going to be a chili gumbo cook-off, bounce house for the kids, food, vendors, games, prizes, sweets, and, and, and more. Come and enjoy the fellowship and good time Saturday, November 4th. We're going to have a great time. We do have flyers on the information desk. You can grab some of those flyers, as many as you need, and would like to hand out to family, friends, neighbors, and so on. Invite them to the fall festival. We're going to have a great time. We still need some volunteers and uh, it would be helpful if we can add a few more names to our volunteers list. So if you'd like to volunteer, please stop by at the information desk. Sign up to volunteer. You may not be able to do everything, but if you have time pre or post uh, fall festival, let us know and we can use all the help that we can get uh, for setup and for breakdown. Men of the hour, young men, how many of you are thankful for men of the hour? We have a great time every time we get together. Our next meeting is going to be Saturday, November the 11th at 9.30 a.m. Now, this Men of the Hour is going to be a little bit different than the ones that we've had in the past, but this one, you will have a hands-on 
work to do. So you're going to have some, some work with your hands. We're going to have some good things uh, prepared for you to be involved in. And uh, this is going to help out some mom and dads as well. Now we're going to have a little bit of a disclaimer. We are doing some things that deal with electricity and cars and, and plumbing and construction. So if your uh, son comes home and eager to put those things into practice, we're going to we're going to make sure that you are aware of that, and uh, they may not be the expert yet, but, but we're showing them how to get some of that stuff done, and uh, we know that they'll be excited about that. So men of the hour, you do need to sign up. We will be having Chick-fil-A again for breakfast, so uh, that is a, a good thing as well. So sign up. That way we know how many are coming. Unlike the last event, we had probably a lot more people than signed up. Take a moment and sign up. Be, make, to make sure primarily that we have enough food for everybody because we don't want anybody to be hungry. Amen? We're going to have a great time. So we're going to go to the Lord this morning in prayer. So let's bring all of these needs to the one who is able. So can we lift our hands this morning and call upon the name of the Lord? There's nothing impossible for our God. And Jesus, we believe once again today that you would move in a mighty way, that there's not a need that is presented before us that's impossible for you. We pray that you would minister and have your way. We know that you are able and we believe it and we call your name in faith believing that you could heal each and every one of them that need healing, that you could strengthen, you can deliver, you could save. We believe it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We declare it and we speak it, Lord. Have your way today. Bless this offering. Let your name be lifted up, O oh God, and let your will be done today in Jesus name amen that church with one accord let's praise the Lord together and lift up his name
Hallelujah. What a wonderful prayer meeting we had yesterday at 12 noon here at the church with the simulcast. 86 churches had gathered from California all the way to the East Coast and a lot in between that came together in a prayer meeting. Over a thousand people were online for prayer and we prayed together and interceded in the Holy Ghost and we were a part of that. I thank God for what was accomplished yesterday. I can already sense a new spirit and a breakthrough in the Holy Ghost in this house by the prayers of God's people yesterday joining all over the United States. I believe God's gonna give us a breakthrough in the vision of the fire falling. It's gonna fall. And the dragon that has been revealed in this last day is going to be defeated in the sense that we'll be able to reach everybody God wants us to reach, that we'll be able to call out of the Gentiles a people for his name's sake, and it's going to happen to the glory of God. I want to talk to you today from the Word of God in Luke 24 and 5, and I want to convince you of something and persuade you. I want you to experience a, an assurance, an assurance. First of all, God can be found. I want to say that again. I want you to be thoroughly convinced God can be found. Second thing I want to convince you is that God can be found by anyone. Anybody in this church can find God. Anybody outside this church can find God. And the third thing I want to thoroughly convince you of is that you can find God anywhere at any time. The only condition the scripture places on that the only condition is that you seek him with your whole heart. Well, a lot of times people, they want God to intervene in their situation and their whole heart is taken up with the issue of whatever it is they're presenting to the Lord. So is there a path for us to, to walk, to be able to get to the place where we can seek God with our whole heart. And I trust that we will find that path today and you will walk the path with me. And I'll walk with you. You won't have to walk alone. I'll walk with you and we're gonna find God in this service. Now, if you didn't know this yet, and if perhaps you, you're just unaware of it, let me just convince you of this. God's in this place right now. <laughs> where two or three are gathered together in his name I think I've got at least two people in the house that came with me in the name of the Lord and because of that the Lord is in this place any freedom you need you can receive your liberty is here your deliverance is here God is here to do exactly what his Bible says he can do that book is in action right now and you can activate it anytime when you seek him with your whole heart. Now, two angels were in attendance at the empty tomb on resurrection morning. Two angels. And the ladies had come early to embalm the body of Jesus. Now notice that the angels asked them a question and that's my text here. Why seek ye the living among the dead? Remember, the answer is in the question. You don't need to answer it because the answer is in the question. They had already declared by the question, Jesus is alive. The problem was, is they weren't looking for the living. They were looking for the dead. 
they were in the right place to find <laughs> what they were looking for. But the resurrection interrupts all of that. And they find what they were not looking for. And that is a live Jesus. And so I want to share with you this text. Finding God in the most unusual places. How many of you know you can now? How many of you know that the Bible is filled with evidence that will convince you and persuade you that God can be found in the most unusual places? <laughs> so I think you ought to just turn to two people and say, I'm going to find God today. Just declare that. I'm going to find God today. Hallelujah. Church, I feel this in the Holy Ghost right now that I'm speaking into somebody's heart and life. I think we ought to stay strong in the faith. Don't lose your faith. I said, don't lose your faith. I want to speak into somebody's spirit. Be encouraged. The Lord is with us. I want to say it again. The Lord is with us. I want to say this to your spirit right now. God is going to see us through to the end. He's not just an author. He is a finisher. He's not just the beginning. He's also the ending. He's not just the first. He's the last. And I believe he will be with us to the end. Now receive that by faith into your spirit. God bless you. You may be seated. This angelic question was meant to correct these women. And to try to show them you're looking for the wrong thing. The reason why we don't find God is we're really not looking for him and we need to do so today. Their expectation was too low because they were looking and all they saw was a graveyard and they were anticipating embalming the body of Jesus. But the prophetic word had promised resurrection. You are promised today salvation and resurrection in this service. That's the book. He said that if you'll repent, he'll forgive you. If you ask, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the word of the Lord. If you will speak it, the Lord will come to you and accomplish in you what your words declare. The prophetic word has promised deliverance. The prophetic word has promised you healing. The prophetic word has promised you that you can be more than you are now. The promise and the prophetic word has declared to you that Jesus is alive that Jesus is living and has resurrected from the dead and he can come and live in your heart and dwell in your soul through the power of the Holy Ghost. But the problem is, is the promise is here and our expectation is here. So I've got to bring you on a path to get you to connect your expectation to the promise. They needed a little angelic nudge. So maybe you won't get an angelic nudge, but maybe you'll get a ministerial nudge to refocus your expectation on the promise, he is not dead, he is alive. Now, if you're just expecting a hope or a dream that you might have to come to pass, that's not good enough. I gotta get your expectation out of your feelings, your emotions, your hopes, uh, your disappointments, and I gotta put it where I know it is solidly anchored, and that is in the word of God. It's the promise that ought to elevate your expectation to where you bring it in alignment with what the Bible is saying. I'm not expecting God to do anything other than what his Bible has said. I'm not expecting God to do anything other, not just what I've experienced yesterday. God can do a new thing today. That's what the book says. 
God says that he can bring something out of nothing and create. If he's a creator and the creator gets activated in this place, watch out. Watch out, something could be created brand new in your life that's never been done before. God could start something in your life that would change you forever today. Not because I want to make you feel good about yourself, but because the Bible prophesied it. I'm expecting God to move today according to his word. The word gives you the outline. It gives you the lines upon which God moves. It gives you the the power upon which you can anchor your faith to and understand that God is ready to do this work. You can find God anywhere if you're looking for him and you're not looking for the wrong thing. Mary found Jesus in the graveyard. He's not dead, he's alive. Throughout the scripture, the evidence is overwhelmingly true that you can find God anywhere you might be. Jacob found God in a place called Luz, which means separation or departure. He was on his way to a new land he had never seen before in a new culture he was unfamiliar with. And something happened that caused Jacob to change in his life when he changed the name from Luz to Bethel because he experienced the, the, the ladder coming from heaven and angels ascending and descending upon the ladder. What happened that changed this place of fear and sorrow and desolation to a place of hope and salvation? Jacob found God. God didn't have to change the place. You need to learn that God can be found in any place place you might be in right now. Your emotions do not count. Where you're at does not count. The circumstances do not count. They may not be favorable. They might be favorable. They may not. We don't need the right atmosphere. It don't have to be the right time. It doesn't have to be the right season. I serve a God that can make the plowman and the reaper operate at the same time that you can be sowing on one side of the field and reaping on the other side of the field. Well, if you don't sow, then you cannot reap. Well, I want you to know my God can sow and he can also reap where he is not sown and he can pick up what he did not lay down. So you better watch out here. God's liable to move in here and start operating at a level you don't even expect because somebody here needs to find God. I think somebody ought to activate the word right now. Don't activate what I'm saying. Activate this book. With his stripes, you were healed. With his power, you can be delivered and saved. An unusual place indeed. Not favorable for an audience with God. Yet Jacob found him. God's always specialized in revealing himself in the most unusual times and places. Most who come to God found him in their unusual circumstance. But I'm telling you, and I want you to understand this, the reason why I preach this, finding God and learning how to do it is the most important thing you will ever do. In all your searching and seeking, be sure to find the Lord. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you, Matthew 6, 33. You better seek and find God because I promise you the lion, the devouring lion, Satan, is going about seeking whom he may devour. You are a target for the enemy and the devil wants to destroy you and send your soul to hell. The devil's doing everything he can to discourage you. He's doing everything he can to silence your voice. He's doing everything he can to kill your worship, kill your joy, and kill your faith. But I come to declare to you right now that finding God is worth everything you have. The devil's looking for you, but I want you to find what can defeat the enemy, what can destroy the enemy in your life. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. If you find him, the devil cannot operate in this place. If you find God, he will overthrow what the devil is doing in your life. All of the destruction of your life will be overthrown by the power of the almighty God if you'll just start looking for him. 
when I lift my hands, I'm not responding to a performance. I'm looking for God. I'm trying to find his presence. I'm trying to locate the one who can make a difference in my life. Matthew 13 and 45 and 46 says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Finding God is worth everything you own. You can sell everything you've got. If you can find God, God can replenish what you sold and give you something priceless in, uh, in return. But desire has to be the key. you got to have a desire to seek God. You have to have a desire for the Holy Ghost. Does anybody want to find God here today? Are you just happy where you're at and you just really don't care that Israel's being attacked and Hamas is stirred up and the devil's stirred up all over the world uh, doing everything he can to kill the Jews and the Christians? Our people are being persecuted everywhere. Our churches are being burned down all over the world. And we're sitting here eating Krispy Kreme donuts. But I think what we ought to do instead of worrying about it is find God. I'll tell you, the answer is God. The answer is Jesus. The answer is the word of the Lord. The answer is the promise. That's what our answer is. We don't need a new nuke. We don't need another bomb. What we need is not another way to do warfare. We need to find the one who's already defeated the devil at, at Calvary. This is what I want to put in you today. Psalm 27 and 4. This is what I want you to get. One thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. One thing, one thing have I desired. Of thee, O Lord. At 211 degrees, water is hot enough for you to use to shave or to make a cup of coffee. But if you add another degree, it'll turn into steam, which you can power an electric generator, take a steamship around the world. Desire can make your coffee or it can power a boat. Desire will cause one to put forth an extra effort and add another step. One soldier in battle cried to his commander, Sir, my sword is too short. His commander cried back, Take another step. <laughs> Come on, get into the battle. Don't hold back and wait for God to give you a longer sword. Take another step. You say, well, Brother Kinsey, I really want to find God. Well, then don't just sit there and wait for something to happen. Take another step. Well, it seems like my sword is just too short and I can't do it. Go ahead and take another step and see whether or not God can add to what you do and accomplish what you cannot. Listen to me. If you'll do what you can do, God will do what you cannot do. He has promised us he will be there. In 1754, George Washington in his early 20s was in a tight spot. He'd been defeated at Fort Necessity and he was accused of taking hasty action and trying to get glory for himself. His officers were accused of drunken debauches. His report on French plans was denounced as crooked scheme to advance the interests of a private company. It looked like the end of his career. Uncle George. His biographer, Douglas Freeman, had this, this to say, just when one was about to say, what an outrage that he should be so criticized. One reflects and says, what a preparation for greater things. And what you think is your destruction. What you thought was the end of everything. It's just God preparing you for something bigger and better than you've ever had the opportunity to be a part of. I'm going to tell you, the church is the greatest thing in all the world. There is nothing greater than the church. If you could just come and be a part of it and realize you are a member of the body of Christ. 
And as a member of the body of Christ, if you're down, somebody in this church will pick you up. If you're hurting, then somebody can put balm in your spirit and heal it. If you're down, somebody is going to be here to lift you to a higher level. And then when God, we do what we can do, watch God begin to work. Because I'm here to find something greater than just myself. You've got to learn to take another step. Instead of viewing all that you've been through as your disaster, why don't you start viewing it as your preparation? See, that'll change your spirit right there. Just start viewing everything as a prep for something better. You're just getting ready. You just say, oh, I've wasted so much time. I've done this and I've done that and I can't do this and I can't do that. Quit looking at what you can't do. I serve a God that can do anything. They run when I don't even need them to, praise God. But praise God, I say run. I say if you're gonna do anything, take another step and get into the fight. Quit sitting back there and let the devil beat you down and tell you that it's all over with. Take another step and say, I'm going to defeat this. This is just my preparation. <laughs> Jacob didn't find God at church only. When everyone was worshiping God and the choir was singing, he didn't find God. He was finding God when his world was falling apart. He was forced to leave his home. He was hurt deep down inside. He was lonely and by himself. That's a good time to encounter God and find out he'll be there and he'll be a friend that sticks closer than a brother. The place where you find God to be the most intimate, to be the most authentic, real, and true may not be at church. Moses found him on the backside of the desert when he finally realized that there was a bush that was burning, but it wasn't being consumed. And you ought to wonder how in the world can all of these people still be in church after all they've been through and still worshiping God and acting like they're enjoying themselves. How in the world can they be like that? Not everybody's bitter. Oh, there's bitter people here, but not everybody's bitter. It's, gen it's generally the unlearned and the ignorant ones that are bitter because they don't understand. They're just getting, God's just getting you ready. Uh, when you go through one thing and come out on the other side, God meant it to be so you can get prepared for what he's got for you. And whatever you've been going through ought to be an indication that what God's got for you is greater. I said it's greater than what you've been through. What God's prepared for you is greater than what you've been through. Somebody needs to stand up right now and say, devil, I'm getting prepared to take you out. God's getting me ready to take you down. God's getting me ready for something better. Thank you, you're awesome. You can be seated. Job found God in the depth of sickness and loss. Hezekiah found God during a terminal illness. Isaiah found God at the death of a friend. Gideon found God in the stress of oppression. Elijah found God in the strain of depression. It was the issue of blood that brought the little woman to Jesus to set up a whole new precedent of how to find God. Just touch the hem of his garment and I shall be made whole. Somebody might walk in here and say, if I can just go up those steps right there and pray, God will do a new thing and bless you right about on the fifth step and just knock you right down on your knees and give you everything you need from God. You say, well, it's never been done that way before. I hope he does it in a way you've never seen before. That's why Jesus healed people in so many different ways because he didn't want any ignorant folk to build a church on one way. He'd stick his fingers in somebody's ears and spit on the ground on somebody else, made mud pies, told him to go wash, and then some uh, he just spoke and some he just laid his hands on them. Uh, and then I don't know what all he did, but he just did it this way and that way and the other way because he didn't want anybody to say you gotta do it one way. 
because God might try a new way because we got some new diseases that weren't alive back then that are happening now. But I promise you that my God can heal them all. When he took the stripes on his back, he took every category of disease you can have and he healed it all at Calvary's cross. I don't care what kind of cancer. It can be a new cancer that's never been discovered before, but he defeated cancer and every kind of cancer. I rebuke it now in the name of Jesus. You may be experiencing the most perplexing and arduous ordeal ever. You may have the most strenuous and intricate trial of your experience in life going on right now. But I can assure you that God knows what he's doing. Jesus was born in a stable, wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. It wasn't just simply a rejection of wealth, beauty, and culture and comfort. But God wished to place himself where everyone could find him. There would be nobody that would not be given access to a stable. The poorest man on the planet could walk into a stable. The richest man, the king could walk into a stable. God put Jesus in a stable with animals so anybody could find him. I shot that body. Ooh, the lowliest servant to the highest ranking officer on the planet could find him in a stable. And that's why God's put him in this church is that you might feel like you just came on a Sunday morning and you might be thankful you came. You enjoyed the music. You've been treated good. I hope everybody's greeted you and smiled at you. And if haven't, come up here and I'll greet you and smile at you. And then tell me who didn't smile at you and I'll go pop them one for you. <laughs> We'll take care of you. We'll treat you so many ways you're bound to like one of them. But I'm telling you, God put his spirit in this church so you could find him today. Everybody can meet him here. Because everybody here is going to know pain and sorrow and loss and loneliness and fear. We all struggle. That's that one human condition that everybody struggles from. But in the darkness... And the chill and the stench, the stable. Right. He's waiting for us. Right. How many of you kind of feel like that small boy who said, why are all the vitamins in spinach and not in ice cream? <laughs> I'm sorry, I just don't have the answer. Why aren't there any vitamins in Krispy Kreme donuts? Thank you, Brother Nelson, for my warm. I told my wife, I said, he didn't just bring Krispy Kreme donuts. He waited till the red light was on, that aggravating. And I don't know whether it was that Nelson or another Nelson. We got all kinds of names, but whoever it was, don't lift your hand. My wife will <laughs> mess you up before you leave. So I had to eat two of them. So if you're going to seek God with all your heart, listen to this story. Once upon a time, two brothers had a severe falling out. Feelings and tempers ran hot. Words were exchanged. And as a result, they never spoke to each other for many years. A great rift formed that just didn't seem could be Bridged. So one of the brothers became angry enough to build a fence so he didn't even have to look at his brother's property. He didn't want to see his brother and he didn't want to see the property of his own. They were living together on the property. And so he bought enough wood to build a fence that was eight foot high so he could not look over it and had to look at his ignorant brother on the other side in his property. And so he calls the carpenter, and the carpenter answered the newspaper advertisement and calls the man and sets it up and comes. And the brother decides to go on a three-day journey and said, I expect this, this fence 
to be built by the time I get back. He said, it'll be done. So the brother left and then returned. And what he saw made him so angry that it astonished him that he didn't know what to say because instead of a fence, the carpenter built a bridge. And standing on the bridge was the brother with tears streaming down his face. The brother's heart melted and said, if anybody after all I've said and done to destroy you would build a bridge, I forgive you and I hope you'll forgive me. And the brothers were reconciled and reunited. The moral of the story is this. I don't know if you caught it, but on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. Not just anyone died on that cross. A carpenter named Jesus of Nazareth. He had enough wood to build a fence. Surely he did. He could have kept everyone out. The Pharisees cried, build a fence. The Romans cried, build a fence. Hell cried, build a fence. But much to their dismay, the carpenter on Calvary's hill of sorrow where sin's demands were paid and rays of hope for tomorrow across our path were laid. A carpenter built a bridge. And not only that, he's standing on that bridge with outstretched arms, with tears of joy, a heart of forgiveness, and waits for you to come home. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but God's calling somebody to come home. I want to say it again. God's calling somebody to come home. He could have built a fence. You're not worthy of his salvation. So don't let the devil talk you out of this precious gift because you're not worthy. And I've had Pentecostals tell us that. I've had sinners tell you that. You've had parents tell you that. You've had family tell you that. You're not worthy. You've messed up too much. You've made too many mistakes. But I have come to tell you that the devil is a liar. I serve a God who manifested himself in the flesh. And of all of the enterprises he could have involved himself in, he was a carpenter for a very good reason. He had a bridge to build. And the gap of sin between man and God was too great for us to span. But thank God Jesus died on the cross and I declare it, in spite of your presumption, in spite of your prejudice, in spite of all of the things that you think, my God can still save anybody, anytime, Anywhere they will find him and seek him with all their heart. So I say it to everybody in this building, come home. Come home. Please stand. You can find God anywhere, anytime, anyone that you want to seek him with your whole heart. Now, wonderful crowd. Y'all been awesome today. Thank you. Your response has been beautiful. I love you for it, and I bless you for it. You really are great people. But church, don't ever lose your ability to find God. And please don't misunderstand me. I want you to come to church and enjoy the preaching and the singing and everything and find God and feel the blessing of the Lord on your life. There's nothing wrong with that. I thank God for that. But don't depend on that to be your only source. 
If that is your only well, trust me, somebody else dug that well. Somebody else dug that well. Somebody else's price dug that well. And you got to learn how to dig your own well. Because there's going to come some times when you come to church and you can't feel anything. The struggle is going to be so great or you're going to be so mad at somebody. And sometimes you might just be mad at yourself. You're going to be too cold or you're going to be too hot or you're going to be too aggravated or whatever's going on. It's just overwhelmed you. I get it. I'm not rebuking you for that. I get it. But God so designed this that you didn't have to have all of those things to find him. Just seek him with your whole heart. And so he's calling you right now. He's, he's asking you, come home. He's on the bridge. He built it. You were expecting a fence. I can't be a Pentecostal. I'm not as good as these people are. Some of them were worse than you ever thought about being when they came to God. But thank God for salvation. God can make you what we are. So I open this altar for anybody. Brother Eric, if your baby's here, went to get her out of Sunday school, they're going to come and we're going to pray for her. They've got to have surgery. God's able to touch her. But I want you to come. Come on home. Come on home. Wherever you might be in this audience, come on home. Come on home. Step out and come home. I know it's difficult, but that we'll walk with you. I told you we're going to walk with you. Just come and meet me up here at the front. Come on. You want to come. You know you do. I know it's a little awkward in the front of all these people, but we're not as crazy as we look. We, just, we, we need God just as badly as you do. We're as hungry for God as you are because we need God. I don't know what tomorrow may hold. Because the enemy we're fighting now doesn't fight clean. I don't know that there's a way to fight clean. But there's just, they're not fighting clean. They're fighting dirty. They're taking hostages. They're beheading babies. It's horrible what's happening in our world right now. And people are applauding it. They're applauding it. That's what... They're not even horrified at it. They're like, cool. They want freedom. They've been offered freedom, but they don't, they refuse to accept it. And yet they still want to kill people. Because when you have it in your heart, you want to annihilate people. It's not a good place to be. It is just not a good place to be. But God's calling you home. You feel the stirring. That's why you feel this stirring. That's why you're here. You may have thought you were just accepting an invitation, but God's calling you home. God's calling you to return. So you need to hear the call and you need to receive it right now. I'm going to leave this altar open just for a little bit longer. Okay, there's Eric. Amelia. Amelia. Hey, hey, baby, we're going to pray for you right now. We're going to pray for you in just a moment, okay? Amen. We're going to pray for your foot. But God's calling every one of you right here. He's calling you home. He's calling you to come and seek his face. Now, church, here's what I want you to do. Take somebody by the hand and bring them to the front. Take somebody by the hand. I, I just would like for as many of you as can and feel good about it. I want you to come and 
be a part of what we're doing. Take them by the hand and bring them. Everybody, come on up here. God's got something for you today. He really does. He loves you and he's trying to reach for you and talk to you and minister to you. He really does love you. He really does care about you. Come on home. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> I feel the Holy Ghost working right now. People are receiving the call. People are being ministered to. People are hearing the voice of the Lord talk to their spirit and let them know that there's possibility. There's answers here. There's hope here. There's help here. Some of you ladies come gather around Amelia up here and we're going to pray together. And we're going to believe God for a miracle. Brother Strobel is going to... If you, want to, if you want to receive your blessing in the Holy Ghost, you want to receive what God's got for you today, I want you to lift your hands right now and begin to pray all over this place. God is ready to minister to you. God is ready to minister to you. He's ready to touch you right now and minister His grace and His love to you. Now I want you to reach out. I want you to lift those hands and begin to call on His name. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I want you to come into my heart. Jesus, help me. Hallelujah. You can find God here today. I said, 